Hello and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, tracking the activities of fintechs across the past five years. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker, and with me is Peter Keenan, who is CEO of Apex Global uh, Payment Gateway Business. Peter, thanks so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure, Joy. So can you tell me a little bit about how the COVID-19 pandemic is really um, impacting the e-commerce world? So we're seeing a number of impacts. If I talk some of, some, some of the short-term impacts that we're seeing. So if you're an e-commerce uh, or a multi-channel retailer, what we're finding is that those that operate across multiple channels, online and in store, where they have their stores closed, their only route to selling now, today, is online. And they're having to shift, particularly in the fashion industry, a lot of their stock online. And what that is driving is a lot of promotional activity and online sales in those, in those, for those businesses are really up significantly. Now, that said, for the clients that we deal with, although their online sales are up dramatically, it's not enough to compensate for the loss in sales that they're seeing in stores. If we then look at some of the service industries like gaming or gambling, anything that involves home entertainment where families are currently holed up at home, we're seeing significant growth in those sectors uh, as well. Uh, obviously, anybody who isn't online uh, and is in the travel sector is, is struggling hugely. So uh, the likes of airlines or sale of airline tickets, massively down, 97% down. Uh, you know, from according to our data, uh, any business travel significantly impacted. So we're seeing some very profound impacts. That's in the short term. Uh, the current view, and certainly uh, when we talk to our clients, that if you if you look a, li a little bit longer term, uh, a lot of these shifts we think are going to be around for the long term. Uh, a lot of new sec uh, sectors of, the, of of society who perhaps were a little bit resistant to online are now getting used to shopping online. Uh, whether that's for groceries, uh, and they're becoming far more comfortable shopping online. And those changes, we don't think, are going to, are going to revert back anytime soon. Okay. Um, but what frictions still exist when it comes to digital payments today? Yeah, so if I talk about digital payments, if for our clients, like merchants, who are mostly large global e-commerce players, the single biggest friction for them is around how do you handle payments in lots of different countries around the world? Um, everybody thinks that Visa, MasterCard are ubiquitous in every country. That, that is simply not the case. Visa, MasterCard are by far the largest payment methods around the world. But there are other very significant payment methods that consumers in those countries want to use. So, for example, if you go to Russia, the Mir card is the dominant payment method in Russia. If you go to China, it's WeChat Pay or Alipay and not Visa and MasterCard. So for merchants who want to operate globally, they simply have to have access to these payment methods. And that results in them having to do lots of bespoke integrations to those platforms. Um, and what we do here at Apex is through a single API, we, in, we open up access to all those various payment methods around the world. From a customer point of view, from a shopper point of view, obviously using all those different payment methods can be a bit bewildering. Um, there's a, still, even today, lots of friction in the, in the payment checkout process, mostly designed to reduce fraud levels. So asking you for passwords or sending a one-time password to your mobile phone, um, particularly here in Europe. Uh, so those frictions still exist today, but that's one of the trade-offs that you have to make in order to make digital payments secure. So my last question is really around the recent partnership uh, with open banking digital platform Volt. Um, and the aim was to unlock open banking payments. What does that really entail? Yeah, so again, this touches on what I, what I mentioned earlier about different payment methods. Open banking it essentially was born out of European regulations, the Payment System Directive, PSD2, uh, that was launched about four years ago. And really what open banking is, is a standard whereby banks across Europe have been forced through putting in an API layer to give other third parties like ourselves, like Vault, access to the underlying bank account. And what access means is the ability to allow 
the bank's customers to initiate payments from their bank account. Um, and what that really enables us to do is create another way that consumers can make point of sale payments. If you like, it's a, it's a competition to Visa and MasterCard. It's a way of reducing reliance on the traditional card schemes. The benefits for the consumer, uh, if you like, are that it's a very efficient way to make payments, but also before they initiate the payment, they're able to see the bank balance in their account and they can decide, you know what, should I be buying this product or service or not? Have I not got enough money? You can't do that with a traditional credit card or with a traditional debit card. In many respects, you're sort of shooting blind, if you will, when you buy products. You, have to, you do not know the real-time balance in your account. And the other real benefit for the consumer is that it's a much more secure way to pay. It's all fully tokenized. There's no card numbers moving backwards and forwards. Um, but it's still very nascent, very new. Uh, but anything that's, that, that involves bringing more competition into the payment space has to be a good thing. Ultimately, merchants and shoppers will benefit in the medium to long term. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Peter. Thank you very much, Joy.